This is 13.3 volume of spheres. So you've been learning about volume formulas for other three-dimensional objects. And so now we're going to talk about a sphere. So a sphere is a three-dimensional 3D figure with all points that are on the sphere the same distance from the center. So we have the center of the sphere just like we have the center of a circle. So the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the sphere. So it's the same idea for a circle. For a circle, the radius is the distance between the center and any point on the side of the circle. So here's a point on the circle. This is going to be the same distance. Here's another point on the circle. So that distance is going to be the same. So these distances are the same. So that's the definition of a circle. It's all the points the same distance from a center. So you, if you have a compass, you put the point of the compass here and then you drag the pencil around to make sure it's the same distance from the center all the points are. So that's for a two-dimensional object called a circle. But for a sphere, we have to think 3D. So this is a um, sphere drawn on two-dimensional paper. So you have to kind of imagine it. So you've got these dashed lines are like behind it. And you've seen pictures like this before, and same here. So you can see that if you drew a line on a, on a sphere, it's really a circle. So we can draw one around. We can draw it this way. And then this is kind of the outer part of the circle of the sphere. So again, think three-dimensionally. The radius is the same thing. So if we went from the center of that sphere to the top, the point on the top, that's the radius. Here's a point on the side of the circle, of the sphere, I mean. that's a radius length. And then here, think of this, this is on the surface of the sphere. That line is on the surface of the sphere. So go like this. And so that's a radius length. So again, that doesn't look like the same length, but we're thinking three-dimensionally. You have to imagine the 3D object. And then also back here, you know, because I'm saying this dashed line is like the back of it. That's also a radius length. So anywhere in space, you go from the center to anywhere in space and the same distance, and that would be a point on the sphere. So if you um, reached your hand out and um, thought of the tip of your finger, if you're pointing, the tip of your finger as everywhere that that touches in space would be the outside of the sphere. You go all around, you go in front of you, above, behind, wherever, and if you could actually draw a point on you know, wherever your finger was touching, then that would form a sphere. You kind of have to think about that one. So the radius of the sphere I have it here is pretty much the same as the radius of circle, except two-dimensional versus three-dimensional. So the points lie on that surface in a radius length away in any direction in space when you're talking about a sphere. But for a circle, since it's two-dimensional, it's anywhere around it. That is a radius length from the center. Okay, now we're going to talk about the formula for the volume of a sphere. So it turns out the volume of a sphere is directly related to both the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a cone. So we're actually going to come back and fill this out. Actually, no, I'll go ahead and do it now. So I'll tell you what the formula is. It's the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So how in the world did we get that? Well, we're going to talk about that. So how does that formula make sense? So let's talk about what we know so far with cylinders and cones. A cone with the same radius length and height of a cylinder is one-third the volume of a cylinder. And you learned that in the last section. So here we have a radius r and a height h. This is a cylinder. So it's got the base is a circle. We've got the radius length and we've got height h. So the formula is pi r squared h. For a cone with the same radius, so we're labeling both r and both heights are labeled h, so they have the same radius and the same height, but it's a cone, the volume is this exact formula except as a third of that. So the cone is one-third the volume of the cylinder with the same radius and height. So now we're going to throw in the sphere. So on the next page of your notes, we have a cylinder, a cone, and a sphere all 
contained in the same cylinder, just to, sh to reference, to make sure you understand that they are di directly related. So notice that the radius for each is R. So I'm calling the radius of the base of the cylinder R, the radius of the cone is R, and it's drawn here on the base of the cylinder, but it's also, you know, up here, the base of the cone, R. And then it's also the radius of the sphere. And now, instead of calling the height h, we're actually going to, the height is still h, but we're going to make it 2r. So all that means is, in this specific example, I'm saying I have a cylinder whose radius is r and whose height is 2 times r. So I'm just saying that the height of this cylinder is twice the radius. And that helps us uh, prove some things here. So same thing for the cone. The cone's height is 2r. And then you can see that this cylinder fits exactly in this, I'm sorry, the sphere fits exactly in the cylinder because if the radius is r, the distance from the center of the sphere and the top is r, and from the center to the bottom is r, so this full length is 2r. So that full length or the, rate or the diameter of the sphere is 2r. So again, they're all coming from the same base cylinder. So to show you the relationship between the volume of a sphere and the volume of a cylinder, we're going to watch a filling water demonstration just like you did for these two. So we're going to watch this two and a half minute video and I'll just have you, it'll be part of this video. So let's watch it. So what you could see in that video was that when he filled up the sphere that had the same radius as the cylinder and that the cylinder's height was double the radius of the sphere, that when he filled it up, it filled it two-thirds full. So the sphere fills up two-thirds of that cylinder. So whatever the volume of the cylinder is, the sphere with the same radius is going to fill up two-thirds of that cylinder as long as the cylinder is a double the radius. So let's go ahead and look down here. Volume of a cylinder with radius r and height, that is double the radius. We're going to plug that into the formula because this is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. And now we're saying that the radius is still r, so that doesn't change. But now we're going to say that the height is actually double the radius. So we're going to substitute in, instead of h, we're going to substitute in 2r. So now it's pi r squared times 2r. And then we're going to simplify this by remembering that since it's multiplication, 
we can do this in any order that we want. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 2r and r squared together and make that simpler. So r squared times 2r. If you remember from the exponent rules, this is really r to the first. And when you're multiplying two powers with the same base, you add the exponents. So r squared times r is r to the third. And then the coefficient here is really 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. So it's 2r cubed. And that's what you get when you multiply those two things together. And then down here, normally the order when we write it, since we still have to multiply it by pi, the order is the rational number, because 2 can be written as a fraction, the irrational number, pi goes on forever without a pattern, and then any variables. So that's why it's written in that order. So we have that r cubed, we have the 2, but the 2 comes first, then pi, then r cubed. So that is the formula for the volume of a cylinder that has a height of 2r. So this isn't the general formula, but it's if the height is twice the radius. So there's our volume. And then remember by the video that the sphere that has the same radius as this cylinder is going to be, its volume is going to be two-thirds of that. So if we come down here, we can see that this 2 pi r cubed is right here because this is the volume of the cylinder. The rate of the sphere is going to be two-thirds of that volume. So of indicates multiplication. It's two-thirds of 2 pi r cubed. So we're just going to multiply two-thirds times 2, and it's really 2 over 1. Then when multiplying fractions, multiply across. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. So we get 4 thirds. So that's how we get that 4 thirds and then times pi r cubed. And that is why that is the volume of a sphere. So now that we know where the formula comes from, we can use it in our problem solving.